Here it is. How does Mr. Dido's height compare with other AP STAT students? In order to answer this question, the student, 21 students were sampled from Focus. Their heights in inches were as listed. Okay. Below is a dot plot of the distribution of data. It's pretty good dot plot, but it is missing something that would lose points. What's missing? Units and or title. It needs something under that x-axis, right? So which, what should be labeled? Heights in inches. That needs to be under the box plots, or box plot, the dot plot somewhere to give it context, right? Right, that's the other I issue here. I don't know why this 76 is there. It should be right here at 77. That's just a bad, bad form. That dot at 76 should be at 77. It's just a typo. Okie doke. Now, what is the median height and how would you find it? Well, how do we find median? Middle in order, don't put it in the calculator. <coughs> We're gonna do it by hand, sorry. It, it's promised this is not a hard data set to do this with. And it's, look, it's already in order from least to greatest. So what will we do? Find the middle, <laughs> yeah. So here's how I do it. I just go from the outside in until I hit the middle. There's 21, you could count in 10 if you wanted. There it is, 63 is my median. That is five foot three. Five foot three, 63 inches. All right, how do we find it? Find middle value. When they're listed from least to greatest, right? They have to be in that order to find the true middle. Now, the median could also be called Q2, the second quartile. So then what would Q1 stand for? First quartile, okay, so quartile one, all right, or the 25th percentile, it sometimes is referred to, 25th percentile. So to find Q1, once you've found the median, you kind of section off the data, everything below the median, and we're going to find the middle of that section. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before, cross them out till I find the center, uh-oh, I have an even number, so what do I do with that? Add them up, divide by two. So what is 61 and 62 going to average? He was getting there. 61.5. <laughs> he was just mathing out loud. It's okay. Okay, so Q1 is 61.5. Is that okay? And then to find Q3... It's the same thing. Take the, sec the high section of the data above the median, and let's find the center of this. There it is. What's the average? So Q3 is 66.5. So how do we do this? We find the median. Oops. Hmm. Change colors on me. The median of the low half and the high half. Now it says, okay, record the values that we found and we're going to use those to create a box plot. So what's the minimum? 57. 57. All right, Q1 we found was 61.5. Median, we said, was 63. Q3 was 66 and a half, and the maximum is 
77. So far, so good? This is what we call the five number summary. Five number summary. Now, sometimes they'll give you a scenario and they won't necessarily give you all the data points, but they'll say, hey, here's the five number summary. But when they, they just list out five numbers, they don't, they don't say the minimum is this, the median is this, it's always in that order, okay? So you just gotta know that, minimum Q1, median Q3, maximum. It's just like we're le reading left to right. So using this data, we can make a box plot really simply. Okay, you're gonna start with the median, start in the middle. So I'm gonna put a vertical line at the median, it's 63. And then Q1 is at 61 and a half. And then Q3 is at 66 and a half. And this creates the box in the box plot. Median is that vertical line. And then the old whiskers will come from that and go to the max and the min. So the max is gonna be way out here at 77. And the minimum actually goes a little bit further than the graph at 57. Can we handle that? Not so bad, is it? For real? Okay, so the interquartile range, another vocab word for you. It is defined as Q3 minus Q1. So it's the difference of Q3 minus Q1. Find the IQR. All right. Q3 was 66 and a half minus Q1 was 61 and a half. What do you get when you subtract those two? Very good, five. It's just five, right? It's just five. It's all your fault. It's fault. All right. Now, where do we see that on the box plot? It's literally the box of the box plot. Is it not? Oh. Collective. Ah, oh, look at that. It's the box of the box plot. I guess I don't say five. Say what? I don't say five. It doesn't, but it has a length of five. So if you wanted to count from 61.5 to 66.5 and do the subtraction there, you can find it. Yeah. There it is. It's the box. Now, here's the, here's the question y'all been asking me. How do I know if it's really an outlier, miss? Here you go, here you go. The mystery is now solved. An outlier is a data value that's way too small or way too big. Well, what makes it way too anything, right? It's called the um, outlier rule. Here it is. Way too small would mean this, that it's Q1 minus one and a half IQRs. Way too big would mean that it's Q3 plus one and a half IQRs. All right, so let's do this. Notice both, both equations require one and a half IQR. See that? Let's figure that out first. Okay, so one point, oops, 1 1.5 times five. Anybody, anybody? 7.5. There you go, 7.5, good job. So one and a half IQRs is 7.5. So to find out what makes it way too small, I'm gonna take Q1, we said Q1 was 61 and a half minus seven and a half. 54. Okay, what is that doing? Well, 54 then is like this imaginary fence out here on the box plot. Do we have any data points that would go outside that fence? No, no. No data lower, no low outliers. That's what that tells us. Now, we're gonna do the same thing but on the high end of the spectrum here, okay? So it's gonna be Q3 this time. So 66 and a half plus 7.5, that one and a half IQR. 
Seven e four. Check it out. If I put that invisible fence, look, we already crossed it, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Retro. So we got to go back and think about this for a second. That means there's something out here, isn't there? Which, which data point or points falls outside that? 77. 77, good. So 77 is a high outlier. And then I would show that on the, the box plot. By, or you can make it a little star or circle, whatever you want. doesn't matter. But it's separate from the box plot. Now we got to put that whisker back in, though. If we took the 77 out, the maximum, what's the new maximum? <laughs> 70 what? 72. Is it 72? Yeah, 72. All right, 72. So notice I have a new maximum, if you will, and then I have an outlier. Can we handle that? Would you be okay adjusting if the outlier happened to fall on the low end and you had to adjust your minimum, right? Mm -hmm. So we're calculating our fences here. That's what we're doing. So anytime you're asked to make a box plot, you gotta do outliers first, almost, right? You gotta figure out, well, after you've got your five number summary, Figure out if there's any outliers. It kind of saves you erasing and redoing. And then when you do find outliers, this is the kind of work you have to show. All right, you have to show your work. You either have to show the formulas or the values plugged into said formulas. If you don't, if you just put in 54, it's like you don't have an answer. It's a naked answer. We don't give it time. It's not going to work. All right, you have to show work. Um, all right, can we handle that? Now, looking at, it says Mr. Didio, I don't know how to say that, is 63 inches tall. How does his height compare with AP stat students? He's very average, isn't he? In fact, he's the median, isn't he? Okay, so 63 inches is the median. So interpreting wise, how would I explain that to the average student in the hall? That means that 50% of AP stat students are less than 63 inches. And that means 50% are not less than, are taller than. Should not say less than, it's shorter than, right? Yes, sir. Would it really be 50 and 50? Because there's two students who are 63. So they're not shorter or taller. It could be or equal to. Okay. You could throw in or equal to and not be wrong. So that's just where the median fell on this one. All right. Can I go to the back page? Wait. We're almost done. We're almost done. All right. So let's summarize the outliers. Okay. All that outliers. First, you got to know what IQR is. What's that? Interquartile range. And we do Q3 minus Q1, right? And there's the IQR rule. So it has two parts, a low fence and a high fence. What is the low fence? Start. 1.5 IQRs. And the high was Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. Okay, so in the box number two here, it's just a summary of what we just did. The five number summary, minimum Q1, median Q3, max, and the box plot. 
So let's use our thinkers. What percent of the data is between each section? 25. They're called quartiles. So 25% of the data is in each section. Oh. <laughs> you with me now? Yeah, yeah. So there's 25%. So you have to get used to that. Like from here to here, that's the lowest 25%, right? Here to here, it's the, second, it's the second quartile, third quartile, fourth quartile, okay? When you line them up in order. Now, IQR we said is the middle 50%, and where do we see that on the box plot? The box. It's the box, yes. It's the little box. Okay, comparing distributions. Now, this is the SOX thing revisited. Here we go, right? So with SOX, when you're talking shape, most likely it's either going to be approximately symmetric, left skewed, or right skewed, right? So what does that look like on a box plot? Well, if it's symmetric, that means your median and your box is really met, pretty much in the center. Okay, that's what a symmetric might look like. Now, let's do right skewed. What would that look like? Box is on the left and the tail is long on the right. So, something like that, right skewed, longer tail on the right. Okay, and then left skew, can you figure that one out? Yep. So, there you go. Now, honestly, College Board came out a couple of years ago and just said, hey, listen, we're not going to ask you to predict shape from a box pup because it's really not very, it's not a very fair question. Because honestly, if you see a box plot, do you have any idea if it's bimodal? You can't tell, right? You can't tell if there's any gaps in the data, really, unless there's an outlier, right? What if there's gaps in here, though? You can't tell by the way it looks. So you're missing some key features using box plots. However, box plots are really handy to know if you've got outliers or not, which as we go through the course, that's a big deal at the end if there's an outlier. So. It's got its pluses and minuses. However, shape is not one of those things they're going to probably ask you. However, this question today, they do ask you to do socks, so you kind of have to address it sometimes. We'll deal. Outliers, okay. Um, we just did those, right? It's at 1.5 IQR rule. What about center? Do you remember the measures of center we talked about last week? Heard something. Mean and median. And when do we use those? Which one? Um, mean is unrestricted, mean is restricted. Resistant. Mean, mean is non resistant, so we don't want to use it in a situation where the data is skewed, right? No. Correct. Okay, so we want to only use mean if it's symmetrical or approximate median then in a skewed situation. What about spread? What were our two measures of spread? IQR and standard deviation. Now, here's a good time to talk about IQR. Why is it reliable with spread? Because look, if you notice, IQR, remember we said is the box, isn't it? Notice how it, cut, it literally cuts out the outliers so that it can't mess with the, the measure of variability, because you're just looking at Q, Q3 to Q1, right? Mm -hmm. So we use IQ bar to measure variability instead of standard deviation, as, because standard deviation gets calculated with every possible data point. It gets, it's no, it's non-resistant, so it gets messed up pretty easily. So we did suck. Shape, outlier, outlier, center, spread, and so we're going to add two more C's to it. 
I don't know, socks with three C's. Context <laughs> and comparative language. You gotta have context, as you've seen, and comparative language. What I mean by that is like greater than, less than, same as, it's other comparison language. Um, smaller than, etc. Comparative words have to be in there. I've seen rubrics where they count off if you literally do not have a, a, a comparative word. So, she's telling you. Okie doke. Now, I'm going to give you five minutes. Probably you don't need that more than that to do this application. Let's try it out. Looking back at the University of Michigan's perfect season situation, here's the box plots of the points scored by the 1997 University of Michigan football team and the arch rival, Michigan State. Write a few sentences comparing the distribution. So this is how the question would set up, and this would be where your red flag goes up, and this is the socks with three C's, right? You gotta use that as your checklist. So talk amongst yourselves, come up with your sentences. It could be two, three, four sentences, longer if you really want, but make sure you get all the components. I'll come back in about five minutes, and we'll check and see what you got. All right, try it out. All right, here's what I said. Distribution of points scored by U of M is roughly symmetric, while the distribution of points scored by MSU is slightly skewed right. Remember the L-Y words? You might have argued they're both symmetric. And that's okay. That's where box plots are really not good judges of it, okay? Box plots are not fair in, in that regard. That's why they're not going to do that anymore. Just, so the center of both U of M and MSU appear the same at approximately 25 points. MSU has a much greater variability with an IQR of 20 points compared to U of M's IQR of approximately nine points. So this little squiggly thing is a symbol for approximately, by the way. It's valid, you can use that, you're not docked for that, okay? So. Uh, and then lastly, outliers. Neither U of M or MSU appear to have any outliers. How we, did you get them all? Yes. Obviously, they can be in different orders, right? It's just a checklist. Make sure you have comparison words and you have context in there. Questions about it? Nah? Yeah. 